Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to another English class here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa and I'm one of the teachers here at Verbling. I live in the state of Washington and I live in the United States. Uh, so if you want to join me in this hour and you have a reservation, then you can use your reservation now. But if you don't have a reservation, that's okay. You can always join a Verbling class uh, whenever there's the join class button. So once it counts down those first two minutes up there on the button, then anybody can join the class. This is going to be kind of a reading slash speaking class. We're going to be talking about Oktoberfest, which is a festival that's originally from Germany, but a lot of people around the world uh, celebrate it. So there are lots of different Oktoberfests uh, around the United States and also the world. So I got this article from uh, the Smithsonian Magazine and we're going to be looking at it, reading, looking at some pictures and discussing. So if you want to join the class, then you can go ahead and, and join. Now you just have to click on the join class button. If you're new to Verbling, I will explain a little bit how it works. Um, while we're waiting to see if some students join the class. Uh, the way that this works is Verbling is a website for improving your languages. So we have um, a couple of different types of things that you can do on the website. One of the things you can do is attend classes. So if you're looking at the main page on Verbling, if you're there and you're, you're watching me, this video is uh, streaming live there, then what you're seeing is uh, a couple of classes. So it looks like right now we have three English classes going and a Spanish class going at the same time. So what this means is if you're a member or if you purchase some classes, then you can join one of those classes. So you can join one of the three English classes that are happening right now, or if you want to practice your Spanish, then you can join uh, the Spanish class. We have lots of English classes going at the same time, usually one, two, or three every hour. So if you're wanting to practice your English, Verbling is the place to come. Okay. Hi there, Andre. How are you doing? Hi, Lisa. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I hear you. I'm doing well. <laughs> so I just caught the last part of the class with Henna that you guys, I think you were in there, were you? Were you in that yeah, class? Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just saw that you guys were talking about uh, whether or not people have a favorable attitude of uh, Americans or the U.S., I mm -hmm. guess. I'm not sure what exactly it was. <laughs> yeah. So that was so, funny. I'm not sure it's uh, who made this. Um, it's just a statistics, and uh, you know it's uh, uh, favorable of whom? Of government or, or people? Yeah, exactly. Because government and people are different. It's very different. different. Very different, yeah. Very so. different, and especially in a, a country like the United States, where it's so big. Um, some mm -hmm. people might not realize it, but I think people who are learning English have learned that it's a huge country and so there's lots of variety even in terms of culture and people and values and belief systems and politics so it's really hard to talk about you know an American person and be very accurate just like you know many other countries around the world large countries like Russia and you know yeah. Brazil yeah. China you know they're, they're made up of lots of different types of people that have uh, different values, really, and different lifestyles and things like that. So, it's yeah, interesting. I agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting, though. I mean, of course, especially the United States, that uh, people might think that you get a, you can get somewhat of a, a sense of Americans if you watch a lot of American uh, TV or movies or something like that. But again, it's not necessarily the the best. <laughs> of America that's represented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially those uh, reality TV shows lately. They're kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, they're, they're there to sell sell products and commercials. So, <laughs> yeah. Hi, guys. So, hi, Yuki. How are you? Uh, fine. How, how's it going? It's going very well, actually. Uh, temperatures dropping. It's definitely becoming more 
fall weather, but I like the fall, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, the, the the trees, the the leaves on the trees are color are changing color, so I like that. It doesn't that happen. Sound what? Really good. That sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> Does that happen in Moscow? Are the I mean, trees changing uh, color? Привет, Andre. <laughs> Andre, what did you say? It's yeah. Your the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Andre. Uh, the, le the leaves are all yellow. In yellow. Kind of gold, gold autumn. I, I'm not sure if you have this um, okay. phrase in English. Uh, it's gold autumn, autumn or go gold fall. Autumn I'm not gold. sure. We we uh, usually talk about uh, the fall colors because uh -huh. uh, we definitely have a lot of uh, gold. You know the. The, the leaves are turning gold, but they're also turning a lot of other colors as well. So, uh, for example, red is pretty popular. I'll show you a mm -hmm. picture here. Um, this happens more so, more dramatically, I could say. Like um, on the East Coast, you know, I live in the state of Washington, and that's on the West Coast. So uh, we usually have more uh, evergreens, so that the trees stay greener. But um, the other day, I was taking a walk at a park and we had a lot of colors uh, red and uh, golden yellow like this and different shades of green but this is what it looks like uh, in the area of the country known as New England so like Boston and New York uh, maybe Virginia area where Washington DC is the capital and stuff so it's pretty dramatic people really like it but yes. in yeah Indeed. Indeed, uh, it, it, uh, autumn leaves here are very beautiful. Mm. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> um, also it, it is differ from Japanese uh, uh, she, she's autumn, Japanese autumn. Mm. Uh, you know, Japanese autumn is well known as a beautiful red leaves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Red. Uh, so right. leaves turn. Turn to red and yellow in autumn in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you can travel in the area uh, which is famous famous in the red um, uh, uh, leaves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's really be beautiful. Yeah, but here, cool. here, uh, all, uh, almost all leaves are uh, turn into the yellow. Hmm. So so uh, uh, autumn in Russia is. It's called as uh, uh, golden, oh, golden autumn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, it's more just really, the, the yellow it's, it's gold. It's yeah. also really beautiful. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's a Kremlin. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it looks more like that right there. Neat. Yeah, I, it's pretty cool to watch the, the colors change. We also have quite a bit of flowers still, so I've been taking some pictures and putting them on Facebook and stuff because I like I like the colors. It's nice. Uh, yeah, that one that you mentioned about the Japanese, we have a tree here, actually, that turns red, and we call it... It's a maple tree, maybe. Yeah, Japanese maple yeah. tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there is uh, very few maple trees here, uh -huh. and people, Russian people, uh, regard it autumn as a, a, a little a gloomy season. <laughs> yeah. So, because it's getting uh, colder and colder uh, now, so mm. it's a, it means the end of the summer season. Yes. So people get into the depression. <laughs> mm. Starting already, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Antonio, what's uh, what are the leaves like in Spain right now? Are they turning colors? Hello, hello everyone. Hello. Uh, we have a a big problem because the autumn is is late this year. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, the the weather man in the news said that the next weekend we are going to reach. Uh, 15 degrees um, in, in the in the weekend, huh? like like in the in the August month. Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> but I am very upset uh, because uh, I want to go to this weekend to looking for mushrooms and mm. it's a, a bit uh, raining the weather. 
and that's why they are growing on the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and as well, like in, in New York or, or Moscow, uh, the mountain is changing the, the color of the leaves. But uh, this year, uh, that I said, uh, the autumn is, is late. Yeah. Um, wow, that's... Yeah, the weather is always a, a mystery. <laughs> but yeah. what what kind of mushrooms do you collect? Do you know the name of them? Uh, uh, I don't know many names, but mm -hmm. here in Spain is very famous uh, Robellón. Yeah. Or uh, the people in the north say um, I can't rem I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. This is mm -hmm. the the nom the name. Of the this marron is delicious. Yeah. But uh, there are uh, other uh, there are another marrons who are. Um, I don't know. Do you have to be uh, pretty careful because here we have so many yes, marrons yeah, and yes. some are poisonous. But uh, yeah, that's the, the word. Poisonous. <laughs> I have to be very careful. But for the smell and the look, it's uh -huh. very easy to. To, to know if that is, is good or not good. But oh, okay. there are some other kind of, of marrons who are very dangerous. Uh, every year, uh, die one or two people because about the, the problem wow. of the, the mushroom. Yeah. I don't know a, a lot of kind of marrow. It's, it's the very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, the same, I think the same thing happens here, and uh, I think right now people are going into the forests to find some wild mushrooms, but I, I'm i not a big mushroom fan, so I'm always a little bit uh, scared to eat them, so I just stick to the regular mushrooms. <laughs> niscalo, this one, uh, Niscalo. They ah, Niscalo, it. yeah. It's, it's delicious, but uh, another kind of... of Mushroom uh, for me is not very good because they are uh, a bit. Um, I don't know the name. Like like the the lemon is uh, states uh, hard and and mm. uh, a bit a bit uh, tasty. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know in. Uh some parts of the United States, uh, people like to gather wild mushrooms, and and some parts uh, they're not that famous. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupt you. Hi, Victor. No problem. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, I just want to ask uh, Antonio. Uh, mm -hmm. As I understand, do you collect mushrooms? No, I eat <laughs> mushrooms. <laughs> but uh, oh, where hi. do you go to the forest to get them, or who gets them? No, no, no. Oh, I, you visit, don't know. I visit uh, some exposition about uh, this oh. is the, 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 the time of the of the the year when uh, in the in village, a small village, they came out to the countryside to collect maroon and they uh, made expositions about maroon and they explain. Oh, about okay. its characteristics or its taste. Uh, the, the, the funniest is uh, the, the local restaurants yeah. uh, make uh, um, food about this kind of, of mm. food. Oh, okay, so you're going to, okay, so you're not, you're yeah. not going to pick them. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, we have some uh, events like that too here in Washington. Uh, there's like a wild mushroom show, and the the technical term is mycological. So that's like the study of mushrooms and stuff. And a lot of people are really really into it. And so we have a big event here in my town. Uh, I think it's usually once a year, but people go into the forest and pick mushrooms and talk about mushrooms and share mushrooms and yeah <laughs> they're pretty into it. Victor, do you guys pick mushrooms? Yes, uh, in, uh, in last year I uh, mm -hmm. I went to the forest uh, often but uh, 
this year uh, the weather is uh, mm. very dry. Oh, it's dry. Okay. Uh, dry, yes, and uh, mushrooms like uh, wet weather. Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah, the place where they pick the wild mushrooms here uh, is a very wet uh, place where I live. It's actually uh, a, a considered a rainforest uh, because it rains so much. But uh, yeah. they grow on the logs and stuff like that. So, yeah, people go. Yeah, the find fall them. Yeah, uh, this year is. Um, uh, without uh, any rain, it's mm. the weather is almost like in summer. Oh, okay, yeah. Huh. Not mushroom weather. <laughs> Not mushroom weather, yeah. Well, it's mushroom weather here <laughs> in my house because it's uh, it's not too hot. <laughs> yeah, and it has been raining. So, okay, guys. Well, let that's cool. Um. Let, we're going to be talking in this hour about the Oktoberfest. So does anybody know about what Oktoberfest is, and have you ever been to an Oktoberfest? Yes, of course, but uh, I have never been an Oto Oktoberfest, but I know this uh, event exactly, uh, very well. Yeah. Well, I, I went to Munich one time, and I was there, in, that's in Germany, where they have a big Oktoberfest, and it's pretty wild. <laughs> Lots of. Uh, I don't drink beer though, so I was more just looking at it and watching the people. <laughs> but uh, it gets pretty crazy with really huge glasses of beer and everything, so it can be pretty wild there. Um, what about you, Antonio? Have you ever had an Oktoberfest or been yes. to one? I miss this year because in my city the the festival it was the last week. Oh, okay. Um, I have been for four years at least uh, attending the Oktoberfest. There mm -hmm. are here in my city, there are three places where mm -hmm. the Oktoberfest is celebrating. And yeah. it's very funny. I am very keen on of beer. I enjoy with friends, with uh, work mates. And we usually go with the work mates with my wife. Ah. Uh, we enjoy a lot. Uh, we it's a good time <laughs> <laughs> with the the musicians. They are very very funny person. They uh, we could play the 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 head uh, play like yeah. the, the people in the picture, and it's yeah. very funny. I enjoy a lot because it, it's um, when the 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 holidays here in my city. Uh, it's uh, at the same time that the Columbus uh, celebration, like oh, in America. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, here in my city is very famous the Basilica del Pilar. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the Virgen del Pilar is very famous. And um, the, the 12th of the October 12th is the, the big uh, day for, for us. Oh, and okay. We, we always celebrate the the October first. Many years ago, they started to 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 do to do, uh, to do this this kind of party here, and it's uh, it's very successful. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm cool. Do they play German music or Spanish no, okay. music? <laughs> Sometimes they play German music, and other times it's music from everywhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Or in passion, or it depends. Yeah. But it is very, it's very, very enjoyed. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. All right. Very fun. Okay. Well, this class, I was thinking we could do um, some reading, and then there are eight places that we're going to read about where they have some pretty big Oktoberfest uh, uh, celebrations. And yeah, it looks like it was. It's either happening this week, pretty much, in different places, or last weekend, maybe. Um, let's see, well, Andre. Why don't you go ahead and read this yeah. first uh, paragraph here for us? Mm -hmm. Can everybody see that? Okay, is it big enough on the screen? You can also yeah. open the link if you want. I'm gonna put it again in there. There you go. Okay. Okay. Can I start? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, every fall, millions of visitors descend 
upon upon Munich, Germany to celebrate Oktoberfest, Germany's famous beer and pretzel laden celebration. The festival, the larger, largest of any festival in the world, with over six million participants, began in 1810 uh, when Crown Prince Ludwig, uh, later King Ludwig I, the first, married Princess Therese uh, von uh, <laughs> German. <laughs> uh, the newlyweds invited all the citizens of Munich to celebrate their uh, nuptials. Mm -hmm. Nup nuptials. Nuptials. Yep. Nuptials outside of the city gates on a field now named uh, Theresien. Sorry, I don't know German. Yeah, the party was such a hit that uh, the future king and queen decided that one. They wanted to recreate it every year. Oktoberfest has been held at this uh, Theresian Wies mm -hmm. every year since, with the exception of uh, 1813, when Bavaria was engaged in the Napoleonic Wars. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's I didn't realize so many people came. Six million people come for to drink beer and pretzels. <laughs> yeah. So it's a big party. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, I didn't really know the history of it, so now we just learned something. It's a, a wedding uh, party that happened. So the nuptials just mean to celebrate their the fact that they got wedding. A nuptial refers to a marriage. So they got married, and they wanted to have a big party, and it was such a hit. So it was so popular and so nice that he wanted to do it every year, and that's how it got started. Okay, I'll read this little part and then we'll get to the next part. Munich may be home to the original Oktoberfest, which despite its name occurs each year from late September through the first weekend in October, but it's not the only fall celebration of German culture. If you can't make it to Bavaria this year or want to try a festival with smaller crowds, here are eight alternatives. Okay, Antonio, why don't you read? This is in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, in Canada. And you can read that paragraph for us about this celebration. Your microphone is muted, Antonio. Okay. There you go. And if you are looking for this, the world's second largest of Torfest, you'll have to go beyond German borders. The biggest October phase outside Munich takes place each year in the Ontario twin cities of Kitchener Battle. Kitchener was named Berlin from uh, 1833 until uh, 1960 mm -hmm. because the large number of German immigrants migrating to the city. At last year's October first, uh, seven 100,000 100, visitors consumed more than 50,000 sausages <laughs> and 25,000 uh, 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 pretzels. Wow. But eating at Waters Look October 1st is more than good for, for visitors. It is an economic boost for the city. Last year, the festival generated an estimated uh, $21 million in economy activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, I don't necessarily need to go over all the words, but if there's something you want me to go over, I will. I think the, you know it's the main ideas we're just reading about each uh, city that has their own version of this celebration. And so this particular one had a lot of German immigrants, so that's probably how it got started. And let's see, consumed just means they ate. To consume food means to eat or you know drink also. Um, and it was an economic boost for the cities. Uh, Antonio, what do you understand by that? It's an economic boost. Do you understand that? Let me some engine economic uh, is this this kind of party because people earn money about yeah. this this kind of, of festi festival. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So if something is a boost, that word just right there means it, it um, helps out or it's like an increase in something. And it could be a boost of lots of things, like a boost of energy or something. But an economic boost refers specifically to the economy. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people coming, a lot of people eating a lot of things. So that um, generates or creates a lot of economic activity, so money being exchanged. Not to mention, you can uh, think, you know, anytime you have a big festival like that, people also come, so there's transportation that they're paying for, and they stay at hotels and things like that. They go out to dinner also, so it creates a lot of uh, money for the city. All right, let's see. This next one here actually is in Brazil, Blumenau, Brazil. <laughs> Looks like Germany right there. Okay, Mehmet, would you like to read about uh, Brazil here for us? Of course, okay. All right. Palm trees aside, Blue Menu, Brazil's Little Germany, puts on traditional German beer festival each October in celebration of the city's German heritage. In 1850, German philosopher Hermann Bruno Otto Blumenau, along with 17 countrymen founded the town as a, an uh, agricultural colony. Today, an estimated 30% 30, 30 of the town's... Uh, oh my god, I am so bad. <laughs> I will help you. 320,000. Yeah. Thousand residents are of German descent. Decent. 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 Uh -huh. Decent. Uh -huh. has hosted a beer festival every October since 1984, and each year more than half a million visitors make the journey south to celebrate. In 20, uh, 20, 12. 2012. Mm -hmm. Party goes consummate 652,000 liters of beer, mostly the Brazilian beer Brahma. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> so, uh, it's, this is kind of funny the way it started. Palm trees aside. So, you know, don't worry about the palm trees, which obviously are not part of Germany, <laughs> but they are a part of Brazil. Uh, this is kind of cool. It's like a little town that's uh, like... Germany. We have another town like this in my state as well. It's called uh, Leavenworth, and I've never been there, but my my kids have been there. But when you see pictures of it, it's like that. It looks like a little German town in terms of the architecture and the buildings and stuff. And it's also uh, near the mountains. So I think it's interesting. But definitely, you know, when immigrants travel and move to other countries, sometimes they set up towns that look uh, like their old towns. All right, let's see. Some words here, maybe? Mm, any words you guys want me to explain? Countrymen, so people who were also from Germany, and they founded the towns. So that means they created, you know, they discovered this area and took it and created a town there, made it into a town. Um, and there's a lot of residents that are of German descent. So that word means that's where they come from, where you are descended from. So like Yuki, he's living in Russia, but he's of Japanese descent. And so if he were to, like for example, if he were to stay in Russia and have kids, then his kids would be Russian citizens, but they would be of Japanese descent. And host, um, if you host a party or a festival, it means you put it on. You're the person sponsoring the party or the festival or something like that. So they're also drinking a lot of beer and <laughs> lots of party goers there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andre, good observation. You can start in Germany and just uh, go around the different countries to get your uh, <laughs> to have fun and drink a lot of beer. <laughs> Very convenient schedule. <laughs> and, yeah, good schedule. <laughs> okay, and uh, German heritage. So something uh, heritage just means like 
uh, your culture, but from the old days kind of things. Like, so instead of a modern day culture right now, it's the culture that maybe your parents or your grandparents or your great great grandparents uh, grew grew up with. So it's you're celebrating the old part of uh, your culture, your heritage. All right, so here we have one in the United States, which is in the state of Ohio, and the town is called Cincinnati. It doesn't look very German, but they're having the Oktoberfest. So, Yuki, would you like to read those paragraphs okay. there? Okay, just a minute. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the 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 largest Oktoberfest celebration in the United States takes place takes place each year in Shinika Shinati Cincinnati Shin, Shin, Cincinnati. Yes. Around 500,000 people are expected to attend this year's Oktoberfest, Jinjinnati, which has yeah. take, <laughs> taken place since 1974. This year's festival kicks off with the annual running of, running of, of winners, mm -hmm. a test of speed between 100 to dash. Dutch, Dutch hands. Dachshunds, we say. Yeah, that's it's a German word, Dachshunds. It's a type of dog. <laughs> I'll show you what it is after you finish reading. Ah, Dachshund. Ah, okay, it talks. Uh, Dachshund. Uh, between hundred Dachshund dressed as hot dogs. <laughs> it sounds funny. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> According to Oktoberfest vendors, Jinjinnatians uh, uh, Jin are Jin <laughs> and shy about chewing yeah. down their favorite German grub. The festival goes through over 80,000 bratwurst. Mm -hmm. Bratwurst. Uh, yeah, it's a type of sausage. Ah, yeah. 23,000 pretzels and 3,600 pounds of sauerkraut. That's also ah, a sauerkraut. Yes, ah, okay. sauerkraut. Sauer, sauerkraut each year. Oktoberfest Jinjinati also holds a Guinness Book of World Records title for the world. Largest chicken dance. <laughs> Night, what does it mean? <laughs> Chill, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> In 1994, 40, 48,000 participants, including the Prince of Bavaria, Bavaria, <laughs> got them with a funky chicken. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, yeah, so a lot of. I fun believe fun. the people there is quite cheerful. Cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> They're having fun. Variety. Yes. All right. So let me go over something. So um, it takes place each year. So when you say it takes place, it means that's when it happens. So it happens or it is celebrated each year in Cincinnati. That's how we say that. Cincinnati, and then. They're doing this as like a play on words. So with a Z, it's like Zinsenati. Um, but it's kind of like German. Um, and they've been doing it for quite a few years, since 1974. And the festival kicks off with, do you guys know what the word, uh, the expression to kick off? If something kicks off? Starts. Exactly. Yeah, so they start with uh, the running of the wieners. Okay, so this is <laughs> what it looks like, the running of the wieners. So these are the dots in uh, the walking window. dogs. Yes. So Dog. there's these type of dogs, <laughs> and they dress them up like hot dogs, you know, with buns and things. And then I guess they have a race down the road, and they figure out who wins. So it looks cute. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but you know, people love their pets and stuff, so it's probably popular. So that's a, a German type of a dog. Uh, dots. We say Dachshund. In, in English, it sounds more like Dachshund, even though it's like Dachshund, 
in Germany. So a lot of silly things are taking place in this festival. Well, you can imagine a bunch fun. of beer drinking people, they're going to have some fun, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's a celebration, to, it's like a party. So let's see, the running of the wieners. So the wieners are like hot dogs, it's another name. It's also the type of dog, so we also call this dog uh, a wiener dog. So this particular type of dog is called a wiener dog because, you know, it's kind of weird. It looks kind of like a sausage itself, people think, because it's long and small and kind of round. So it's called a wiener dog, and they dress them up. Let's see. They're not shy about chowing down. Do you guys know chowing down, if you chow down on something? Anybody know? Chow down on sausages or something? Uh, biting, no? no? Yeah, it just means to eat. <laughs> yeah, it's... I think that's the... but, but when you chow down, it means you eat a lot. So to, to eat a lot of something. Like if you say, oh, let's go chow down on some pizza. It means let's go eat a bunch of pizza or sausages. So they're chowing down uh, on a bunch of German grub. Grub is just another word for food. So German food. And um, so the bratwurst is a type of German sausage, the pretzels, uh, the sauerkraut that's made with cabbage. So it's a fermented cabbage, which goes with sausages. And the chicken dance. So <laughs> the chicken dance is uh, a type of dance. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. It's a silly dance. Can you guys see that? Uh, we have, we have similar in Russian, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> music. Da -na 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 yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> this is the Spanish dance of Maria Jesus y los pajaritos. <laughs> <laughs> it's very old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that's the kind of dance that it is. Oops, we got to get back here. Um, that's the chicken dance. We call it the chicken dance because when you kind of move your arms a certain way, like you're flapping your chicken wings or something. So that's why it's called the chicken dance. All right, so you can go to Canada, and then now we're going to Hong Kong. Wow, Hong Kong would be a huge place to have it. Okay, Andre, why don't you read about Hong Kong? They're actually going into November even. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited continue. beer around the world. <laughs> the festivals are continuing. Yes, exactly. Uh, for uh, for 23 years, the Marco Polo Hong Kong Hotel uh, has celebrated their own version of Oktoberfest uh, beer fest with German cuisine, German music, and authentic 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 German beer. The same style of uh, Levenbrau beer served uh, since 1811. Uh, in the tents at the Munich uh, fairgrounds. But those looking to get their hands on the Levenbrau uh, should arrive early, as the hotel only serves 20, two, two, uh, 200 stains of the bright brew each night. Mm. Marco Polo's beer fest builds itself as Asia's longest running out outdoor Oktoberfest, the celebration which stretches for 23 days, attracts more than 53,000 guests who consume over 71,000 uh, liters of beers and 25,000 pretzels. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's kind of amazing to think that this is such a popular festival throughout uh, the world. You know, the German, uh, I guess, drinking beer and eating pretzels and sausage is appealing to many people, not just the Germans. <laughs> so they're using authentic, which means just like real German beer, cuisine, music, everything. Um, I wanted to show you a picture of uh, the real Munich Oktoberfest because uh, when you go to the real one, there are a bunch of uh, tents. So I wanted to show you, like, I don't know if you can see very well, but there's lots of different places where you can go. And inside of each tent, you have these, uh, they call them the bar maidens. They're the ones bringing these heavy, heavy beers. They're huge. And so each tent, you know, has lots and lots of people inside. And, of course, there's uh, people outside as, as well. 
So it's kind of just like all day long party um, inside and outside. But uh, you can see it's really popular. And there's other things going on too. So like the carnival style uh, rides and things like that. But um, here, let's see, any words you guys want to know? Let's see, get their hands on. So to get your hands on some beer means you just want to have some beer, you know, get it in your hand so you can drink it. This word, Steins, that just means like the, the I think it's the mugs. So they only serve 200 mugs. I'm not sure exactly what a beer Stein is. It's a quantity of beer, but I'm not sure. It looks like maybe just one liter, so 200 liters. So not a lot of beer is being served each night, but it goes for a while. So they have a few weeks that they, they run it. Um, let's see. It's an outdoor one. And, yeah, 23 days. <laughs> so you can drink a lot of beer in 23 days. All right. Let's keep going here. Antonio, how about you read about this one in Australia, Biz Brisbane, Australia. So that's a tent that they're in right there, a big tent. To celebrate the outdoor, outdoor fest down under, Head to Brisbane, which hosts Australia's largest Oktoberfest. Even though it attracts crowds of more than 13,000, the big festival managed to maintain an intimate feel thanks to the two Australian German families who start and still run the festival. Held over the course of the weekend, the weekends in October, Oktoberfest Brisbane features traditional German food, German and Australian wines, and traditional German beer, brewed especially for the event, and held to the same exacting standards as beer brewed for the Munich Festival. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, so down under. Did you guys know that that's what, how we refer to New Zealand Australia. and Australia? Yeah, mm -hmm. down under. Yeah. Okay. So whenever you talk about down under, that's what we're talking about uh, is Australia and New Zealand. Okay, so let's see. They attract crowds of more than 30,000. Uh, so to attract means that's how many people are interested in coming, that people are interested. What does it mean, Antonio, that uh, to main in, maintain an intimate feel? Do you understand that little expression there? They have to, to support the, the, the feeling. What do you think the intimate means, right there? Intimate feel, because uh, in, in his own, he he feeling his own to 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 do the same uh, thing for a long time. Uh, not exactly. Does anybody else have another idea? Now there is a the, uh, we have an intimate atmosphere here in the class. Mm -hmm. So intimate, the friendly. Yes, um, small. Private, we could say, yeah, yeah we could say close, um, close relationship. Close, yeah, close. a more intimate feel. So when you have a big festival, a lot of times you don't have an intimate feel because it doesn't feel like you know anybody and everybody's a stranger. And but an intimate feel means like you can get to know somebody and you know talk to people and and feel like you you have a friend maybe or you can be close to them. So. You don't have to feel like you're totally alone in a huge crowd. So that's sometimes a wife uh -huh. typically get, try to try to make make an intimate connection with others, man. Mm -hmm. That that makes a problem. Yes. I hope it is not my wife's story. <laughs> 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 yeah. Whenever you have like, you could also use this intimate feel expression there to talk about like a restaurant, perhaps. So if you have a nice restaurant and maybe the tables are small and there's like the lighting is like candles or something, it has a more intimate feel where you can be close and talk to your friends rather than like a big pizza place or something where everybody's just sitting on the benches and that kind of stuff. So that's what it means to have a kind of like an intimate atmosphere or environment as well. All right, so this one, uh, let's see, two German-Australian families or Australian-Germany fam German families run, the, run it. They started it. They still run it. It means they operate it. And, uh, and let's see, they, it's held over the course of. So held over the course of just means that's when they have the event. So they have it over two weekends 
at a time. Um, and yeah, the beer is brewed specially. Hearing anything? Anybody here? Yeah, uh, I haven't heard yeah. your vo voice for, yeah, for, for a while. Can you for repeat that? Yeah. For, 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 for a few maybe seconds. Your connection has. Uh, uh, my connection? It, yes, disconnected to maybe. Oh. And I don't know. I haven't heard your voice oh. for, for a while. It's now okay. it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay, what about uh, Mehmet? Mehmet, are you there to read? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can okay, hear you. Oh. Okay. Great. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. In 1990, Inemo intended to both celebrate the reunification of Germany and spur tourism to the Michigan town of Frankenmuth. City officials decided to hold a traditional Oktoberfest in the town, known as a Michigan's Little Bavaria. Bavaria. Yeah. Bavaria. Mm -hmm. In 1996, the Frankenmuth Oktoberfest was officially sanctioned by the German parliament, making it the first festival outside of the Munich to receive such an honor. Next year, the Munich based Brewer, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> German is really different. Oh. <laughs> Hofbräuhaus became the event's official sponsor, asserting that Frankenmuth Oktoberfest would have a steady stream of German beer and financial support to continue operation. Wow. Today, the festival features traditional German food, beer and music, as well as Wiener Dog races, where the Dash Huns race for the title of the Michigan's fastest winner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, in a move intended to. So, in a move means in in action. So they did something, and what they wanted to do, the intention or what they intended to do, was to celebrate the reunification of Germany. So I think people remember when German East Germany and West Germany became one country again after the Berlin Wall came down. So they they wanted to celebrate that, but they also wanted to spur tourism. Mehmet, do you know what that might mean, spur tourism? I am sorry, I don't have any idea about <laughs> Spur. Okay. Does anybody yeah. know? Attract? Uh, 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 I think uh, activate. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, another word I would say is um, to promote. Encourage. Encourage. Promote, yeah, exactly. To promote yeah. or to encourage. So. They wanted to find something that could bring more tourists to their town. So lots of towns nowadays, especially smaller towns, they try to figure out something that can bring people to their town. So some kind of festival or celebration or party or you know concerts or something like that. Because when you have tourists, then you have money coming in to your town. So it's a good way to help your local economy. All right, so that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to have more people coming to their town, so that was a good way. Interestingly, uh, it's, it was officially sanctioned by the German parliament. So the German government said this is like an official uh, Oktoberfest. It hasn't, you know, we haven't read anything else about that in any of these other ones. So that's kind of like an, an honor, you know, they're recognizing uh, that this is another important German festival. Uh, okay, Antonio, we'll see you later. If you have to leave, that's totally okay. All right, thanks for coming to the class. Um, let's see, Hofbrauhaus, that's just a, a German beer drinking place, like a pub or something. Um, and so it's interesting that the, they also said they're going to have a steady stream of German beer. So a steady stream means it's going to come. They're, they're not going to run out of beer. They're going to have plenty of beer.
And they have the other things too, of course, the food, the music, and the wiener dog races. <laughs> <It's> kind of <laughs> silly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Fredericksburg, Texas. So of course you can see, you know, as the United States is a country of immigrants, there were at one time a, quite a few German immigrants. So there, we do have uh, towns that are named, you know, German. They have German names, like Fredericksburg is a German name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Yuki. Okay. Uh, in 1990, in a move intended to both celebrate Wait. and we're both we... ce celebrate the. <laughs> Wait, hmm? you're, we're oh. on the wrong one. Uh, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Can you see the one that I, where I am? Okay, okay. <laughs> I for did 34 my years. Okay. For for 34 years, a yeah. small Texas town of 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 Fran Frandadic Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. Uh -huh. settled by German immigrants in the mid 19th century, has celebrated it, its German heritage by throwing its own Oktoberfest celebration. In Tex-Mex tradition, however, Friend of Dixburg's Oktoberfest, Oktoberfest features a combination of German and Mexican-American food with a Fajitas served alongside sauce, sausage and the super uh, sauerkraut. 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 Uh, the festival also allow, allows beer drinkers to sample 50 different brews, including, including beers from Germany and Texas, in addition to food and drink. And the festival features a marketplace where more than 45 artists from around the area will display their artwork this year. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm such a feeling I, I, I want to drink a beer. <laughs> You're getting thirsty now, huh? <laughs> yes. I miss the beer. <laughs> and, and sausage and, and sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting hungry. Okay, yeah. so yeah, like I said, so the German immigrants, so the people who came from Germany, they set up uh, this town in, in Texas. Um, but it's kind of funny. In Texas, of course, they're also a lot related to Mexico, and so we have Tex-Mex. So that's like a mixture of Texan culture and Mexican culture, and so they're adding that in. So they're making a combination of the German food and stuff, but also adding in some Mexican American food. Fajitas is like a small slices of meat that are fried up, so that's uh, Mexican style fajitas. Um, but also the sausages and the sauerkraut. Um, is sauerkraut? Do you guys drink? Or sorry, eat sauerkraut in Russia? Do you guys know sauerkraut? No, I think not. someone eat. Yes, yes, yes. Like this. I thought. Uh, no. No, not to, no. I it's a, a little differ from a uh, German's one, but people. Because uh, this is I what it looks some, like. Sometimes we eat, okay. but, but not always. No. Is it a uh, cabbage it's or? It's cabbage. Something? Yeah, it's cabbage. It's a sour, sour cabbage. It is quite sour. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite uh, suit suit for eating so sausage. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, I have I have been there in uh, Munich. Oh, you have. Before, yeah. Then there, I so I we have, have some sauerkraut. I have, I have, yes, I have tasted. I have I have I have tried the sauerkraut there. It was very tasty. Mhm. Mm it's tasty. Yeah. I like it. All right, so let's see. Beer drinkers, 50 different brews. So uh, brews means the type of beer. So when you're drinking beers, there are lots of different varieties of beer, and those are called brews, how they are brewed. That's the process of making beer. Okay, so let's see. And they have artists, and so it's a different, kind of a little bit different type, but similar celebration, music, food, beer. <laughs> That's the main ingredient is the, the beer, I guess. Okay, and the last place they have for us is in South Africa. All right, Andre. 
uh, from, from, Sep from September to November, Beer Fest, uh, South Africa, counterpart to Oktoberfest, uh, travels through the South African cities. Each stop uh, features a 4,000-seat beer tent, inspired by this at the Munich Festival, uh, as well as three specialty beers brewed by brewmasters from the South African breweries. In addition to beer and traditional German food, festival goers will be treated to German music courtesy of the beer fest um Umpa. 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 <laughs> yeah. For those looking for an for an excuse to bust out the leather hosen and uh, <laughs> dune builds, <laughs> the festival will hold a costume conte contest contest to, uh, yeah. contest to crown its own King Ludwig and Prince Princess Therese. <laughs> All right, so they're having this in three different cities over some different weekends. So you can go all the way, September through uh, November, and they have specialty beers brewed by brewmasters. So this is kind of beer language right here. So specialty beers means, you know, they're, they're not mass produced, but they're kind of like artisan, you know, they are made in small batches by different people. They're um, different styles or you know types of beer. They are brewed by brewmasters. So a brewmaster is the guy who actually creates the beer. He decides you know how to make that beer, how to brew the beer. Um, and the lederhosen, that's the type of uh, outfits that are you know were popular for Germany. These uh, these things right here. So this this look right here. So there you can dress up if you want to and and like this German look here. These are the, the leather shorts basically is what they are, the later hosen. And you can and I don't know what the dirindles are. I have to look that up. Um whoops. Image oh the girls, the dresses, I guess that's what they call them. So the girls. So the boys and the girls can dress up if you want. And uh you can have a costume contest. And so they're going to crown. So to crown means the contest is going to decide who's the king and who's the princess. So since it's based on that marriage festival that they had. Okay, guys. So, uh, Andre, I didn't hear. Did you ever, have you ever gone to an Oktoberfest celebration? No, unfortunately, but my colleague just uh, came from this festival. Actually. Oh. He was, in, he was in Munich and uh, he told us about some, something about it. Interesting. Yeah. Do they have anything like this anywhere in Russia or Moscow or something? Uh, sometimes we have uh, festivals, music festivals, where there is a beer, but uh, maybe it's not kind of uh, Oktoberfest. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There, there is no uh, any alternative in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Before we finish up this hour, what did you write, Yuki? You were surprised by knowing that there's such a big German fest taking place. Oh, yeah, in Hong Kong, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if... Uh, yes, uh, I mean, you maybe. know, Hong Kong's, Hong Kong's a huge city, so maybe they can have lots of things happening at once. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for coming to class. I have a speaking class next if you want to join me there. But if I don't see you in that class, then um, have a good rest of your day. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Bye, guys. Bye -bye. Thank you for the class.